Today we're going to start chapter 13. We're going to start with first the functions of the heart, and which should probably be kind of obvious, and also the coverings, the different layers of the heart itself. And then we'll finish up with some circulation. So this sheet is what we're going to finish with. So you'll want to have this handy. So the functions of the blood is to generate blood pressure. As it pumps, it's going to generate the blood pressure to get the blood to flow all the way through your body. Helps route the blood. It separates pulmonary, which is lungs, so the pulmonary circulation, and the systemic, which is the body circulations, and allows for, make sure the blood gets to the lungs to pick up the oxygen, and then through the body to the, to release the oxygen to the cells. It ensures one-way blood flow. The blood is not going to go backwards through the heart because of valves. And it also regulates the blood supply. So it can change the rate of um, contractions, and it can also change the force to meet the blood delivery needs, so that changing metabolic needs. So as you're exercising, um, your heart rate's going to increase because you're using more oxygen and more, but uh, you have higher metabolic needs. The location of the heart is in your mediastinum. It's in the middle part of your thoracic cavity. That mediastinum was the part that did not include the lungs. It is about the size of a closed fist, so about this large. It seems very small compared to the rest of your body and for the job that it has, but it is about that size. Its shape, it has an apex, which is the blunt, blunt rounded point. So let me grab my laser pointer. So this part right here at the bottom is the apex of the heart where it has that, that rounded off point. And then the base, the base seems like it should be at the bottom, but it's actually up here at the top where it's the flat part opposite of the apex. So here's the base of the heart. So the coverings, we have first the pericardium, and we'll have seen a lot of these in the serous membranes because these are membranes that are just given a pericardial uh, name to it. But the pericardium is the sac that surrounds the heart and anchors it to the to the rest of the thoracic cavity. So here is the pericardium includes the fibrous pericardium, which is going to be our most outer layer, and then the serous pericardium where we have the serous fluid in between it. So the most outer layer here, it looks like it's more of a gray line that kind of goes around the heart here. It's the anchoring um, portion of the membrane that anchors it to your thoracic cavity so that it's not floating around and moving around in your thoracic cavity. And then we have the serous pericardium, which is that thin, transparent inner layer. And so we have both parietal and visceral. We've seen those terms before. Parietal is the most outer. Visceral is the one that's closest. If you remember from chapter one, it was like you put your fist into a balloon, and the balloon that's touching your hand, your hand is the organ, or the heart in this case, then that's going to be the visceral pericardium. And then there's a space where in the balloon it's air, but for the heart it would be filled with a fluid, and then you have the parietal pericardium, and it is going to line the outside. It's right inside of that fibrous pericardium. So it's fibrous pericardium, parietal pericardium, and then it has the space filled with parietal fluid, and that fluid is there to help reduce friction as the heart is pumping. You don't want those two membranes to rub against each other and cause friction and inflammation. So it gives it some lubrication, reduces friction. And then you would have the visceral. So in this picture, kind of looks like a really light pink or red line that's right on the heart itself. Um, they're continuous. They have that pericardial cavity filled with pericardial fluid. The heart wall then. So we have the visceral pericardium um, right on the outside. And then you have... Um, an epicardium, which is actually the visceral epicard visceral pericardium and epicardium would have the same name. So that is talking about the same membrane. So the epicardium is that visceral pericardium right on the surface of the heart. And then you have myocardium. So myocardium, the prefix myo means muscle. So it's the muscle wall. It is the thickest wall or layer here. So it's this area of the cardiac muscle actually of the heart, it's responsible for the heart to contract. And on the very inside, so on this picture, the blue, 
That is the inside of the heart. Um, that is called the endocardium. Smooth inner surface of the heart chambers allows the blood to flow um, smoothly through, through the actual heart chambers. Cardiac muscle, we talked about this in the, in the muscles, muscular chapter, but they are elongated branching cells, they're cylindrical, um, some, it can have one to two nuclei, contains actin and myosin myofilaments, that's striated, it has those lines, and we saw there was that special um, piece in cardiac muscle that was the intercalated disc, it allows cell to cell contact so that the muscle and the chambers will contract as a whole. Um, Electrically, cardiac muscle of the atria and the ventricles behave as a single unit. So the atria, the two atria, we're going to see the chambers tomorrow, um, are going to pump together and the ventricles will pump together. So some circulatory structures. This is where we're going into this page right here. We're going to start, we have heart, the heart obviously, arteries. An artery always carry blood away from the heart. And then arterioles are as those arteries branch in the the actual vessel itself gets smaller until it gets to be capillaries. That's where the, a lot of the oxygen and carbon dioxide, the gas exchange and nutrient exchange occurs. And then as the blood comes back, um, it starts to get bigger into venules. And then veins are always the vessels that are bringing the blood back to the heart. And there's two parts of the circuit. Uh, they're called circuits, but it's part of the blood flow is pulmonary, which is the lungs and systemic. So we're going to go through those. Um, parts of this circulatory circuit. So on our note sheet, it's going to be this middle one on the left side. The heart pumps the blood. The right side is deoxygenated blood, and the left side is oxygenated blood. So right here in the heart. Um, also on your sheet down here on the bottom left, you can fill in blue, the red would mean oxygenated blood, blue would mean um, deoxygenated blood. You can fill that in as well. So we're starting over here and go down one. So we're right here. The systemic arteries carry oxygenated blood from the heart to the tissues. So again, arteries means that it's going away from the heart. So the blood is traveling from the heart to the rest of the tissue and systemic arteries to the systemic circulation. Systemic meaning body circulation. The body tissues, this is at the bottom of the notes page, remove oxygen from the blood, and then they add carbon dioxide, which is the waste, to the blood. So that's what, where the oxygen will leave the blood, a carbon dioxide gets picked up. And then we're going to the systemic veins, veins meaning it's coming back to the heart. So it carries deoxygenated blood back from the tissues to the heart. Then once it gets to the heart again, um, it leaves through pulmonary arteries. Now, you'll notice that this pulmonary artery is actually blue. Um, arteries does not mean that it's oxygenated blood. Arteries would mean it's leaving the, leaving the heart. And in this case, the pulmonary circuit, the pulmonary arteries are bringing deoxygenated blood from the heart to the lungs. And those, the lungs, right here at the bottom, this picture, um, if you think about the lungs as kind of an upside down tree and at each end of the branches there's this cluster of grapes looking like. So you have, these are called the alveoli. We're going to talk about that in the respiratory system. But these capillaries wrap around these alveoli and that's where the blood exchange in the lungs is going to occur. occur. The veins will, the lungs will remove the carbon dioxide. So here's the alveoli, one of those one grape on that cluster of grapes. So the blood's coming in deoxygenated. We, the CO2 leaves the blood to go to the, to the lungs, and then the lungs bring the oxygen in to the, to the blood itself. And then the blood goes out. The pulmonary veins then carry that oxygenated blood from the lungs back to the heart. Again, veins bring it to the heart and then it can go into systemic circuit again. So we're back to the heart and it's going to leave through the aorta to the um, systemic circuit. So it's between the heart and the tissues, so that's the lower loop on this picture, and the pulmonary circuit is between the heart and the lungs, which is the upper loop in this picture. 
All right, so we have a couple questions here. Which of these statements concerning the form and location of the heart are correct? Answer is? Yes, it's directed to the left. So the apex is the cone part, directed to the left, um, in the mediastinum. The serous pericardium, just internal to the fibrous pericardium. So it would be the outer layer of the serous pericardium. What would that be called? It is the parietal pericardium, not the parietal pleura, because that would be lining the lungs instead of the heart. The heart is located in the mediastinum, which is located in the thoracic cavity. The pericardial cavity is located inside the mediastinum, so it's just kind of a way to narrow down the location. The pericardial fluid function is to reduce friction between the pericardial membranes. The visceral pericardium is also called the epicardium. It has the same, the same um, terminology.